Today we're going to install a new water filter system in our Grand Design Momentum 410TH. Now you might remember we installed a clear source triple filter system a couple of years ago in our 397. We used that filter all the way up until we sold it and we really liked it. Due to our experience with that filter, we knew we definitely wanted to do another triple filter system. And as luck would have it, our awesome partners at Mobile Must Have, who we partner with for all of our internet gear, if you saw that video, I'll link it below if you haven't. But they now carry filter systems and they carry this filter from Blue Technology. This particular filter is the Blue Tech Trio fixed mounted three stage 0.2 micron water filtration system. It's a long name for a very tiny product, tiny as compared to other filter systems. So we're going to get into that. Right around the time we got our 410 was when Mobile Must Have started carrying these things and they reached out to see if we wanted to try it out in our new RV. Before I said yes, I definitely wanted to take a look at the specs and see how they compared to our clear source system. And in terms of tech, they're really pretty much the same. They both have a first stage filter that's mostly just a sediment filter, followed by a second stage kind of carbon block filter, followed by a 0.2 micron, which gets down to your bacteria and viruses and E. coli and all of that stuff. So that was all looking good. I, uh, I knew we wanted something that had that same level of virus and bacteria technology. Now, I know every company is going to have their own buzzwords around these technologies like carbon block or coconut activated and things like that. Uh, but in my mind, they're all pretty much kind of the same. Like I mentioned, the biggest thing is that 0.2 micron. Now, I want to stop here and make just a really quick note. Uh, when they sent us this system, it was basically aligned just like our clear source was with the sediment filter first. That kind of makes sense. It just gets all the big stuff out. This filter is just really designed to protect these two filters and make them last longer. If these had to filter out all the stuff this had to, then you know they wouldn't last quite as long. So it is basically a sediment filter and that's the same, followed by the carbon filter and then the 0.2 micron. And that's how this system is set up. If you look at the, the verbiage on the front here, you know they have fancy words for it like longevity, tasty, and 0.2 micron. But they recently did some uh, extensive testing with this and determined that it was actually better to swap these two filters around and have the 0.2 micron come in before the carbon block. Now, here's what they said. I'm going to read it so I don't screw it up. They found that the entire filter set lasted significantly longer in this arrangement. The, quote, tasty filter is rinsed during the pre-rinse startup process to wash away any charcoal particulates, which are then being filtered by the 0.2 micron filter in the current configuration. In the new configuration, the tasty filter can be rinsed freely, which reduces wear on the system. And I also heard it explained as the carbon filter put some things in it, some, some stuff from the carbon makes it taste better. That's why it's called the tasty filter. And then they found some of that tasty bits were being filtered out by the 0.2 micron. So um, they put out this announcement and you'll notice that if you go online and look at images, they're gonna be different than what you see here these two are going to be switched. So I wanted to put that out there in all the testing I'm about to show you and going forward, we took their advice and we did swap these two around uh, and we'll do it like that and see how it goes. Uh, I don't know that we'll notice a lot of difference, but we'll do it and then maybe they'll last longer. Uh, speaking of that, they do recommend changing these out every three to four months. So about once a quarter, which is about what we were doing with our clear source. Also, in case you're wondering, we do still use our Berkey regardless. All of our drinking water goes through the Berkey, whether we get it, you know, straight from tap from a, a water source in an RV park, in our cabin we have one. Uh, we just really like how that filters in the taste of the water that comes out of it. So we use that regardless. With all those triple filter specs essentially being the same, uh, what's different about it? And you can tell the first obvious difference is the size. The filters are only five inches tall versus 10 inches. So definitely more compact, it's much smaller, it's gonna be less obtrusive and easier to find a location for it. You can also tell that instead of plastic, it's stainless steel. Now I'm sure the plastic uh, that are used on these other filters are just fine, they're not gonna leach anything, they're designed for potable water. Potable, potable, I'm probably screwing that word up. Drinking water, they're designed for drinking water, but obviously stainless steel is kind of the high end as far as food grade water containment systems, you know. So I do like that. Now, you might be thinking the same thing I was thinking initially is, 
obviously a five inch filter of the same diameter is going to have less surface area than a 10 inch filter of that diameter and how will that affect the flow rate so i did ask our contacts uh, andy at home must have about this and he said that they do say this is rated for three gallons per minute i confirmed that on their website and that that should be plenty for most rv use and we're going to put that to the test here in just a minute so after I was satisfied that all the specs lined up, we went ahead and placed an order with our good friends at Mobile Must Have. By the way, don't forget we have a 5% discount with them. Just use code changing lanes at checkout. Now you know I love to test things, so I definitely wanted to test the flow rate through this thing. Uh, at first I tried to do it right here and after a few failed attempts because I was running the test through 150 feet of hose from the back of the cabin, I decided I needed to move closer to the water source. Back there was able to test this with good pressure and good water flow. I was getting about 40 PSI back there. So my first step was to do a baseline test and see what kind of flow rate I was getting through my water source. In that first test, I got a baseline of 3.9 gallon per minute. Should be plenty to test the rated three gallons per minute through here. Then I hooked everything up and I measured it through this system and I got about 3.2 gallons per minute. All right, 6.4. Of course, one test is never enough, so I got another baseline. This time I got 4.8 gallons per minute. I think our washing machine was running during that first test, but either way, I got 4.8 gallons per minute, hooked it back up, ran another test, and still got 3.2 gallons per minute through the system. So it definitely stacks up to its three gallon per minute rating. Now you might be wondering if uh, three gallons per minute is enough. I mean, three is just kind of a tiny number in general, so you might be a bit uh, suspicious of that number but as long as you're not like running your washing machine taking a shower and trying to wash dishes all at once it should be plenty in fact if you saw our recent video where we had a few projects along with our storage cabinet in the back of the rv you might remember we did a flow test on the stock shower head versus the uh hopro shower head that we prefer and in those tests the stock shower head which was basically just it was, you know, just a, a limp shower, but it was putting maximum water through the system. We got 2.2 gallons per minute with the stock shower head. And then with our Hopro shower head, it was only 1.3 gallons per minute. And that provided much better pressure. We still love that shower head. We'll have a link for that down below if you're interested. But my point here is we were getting nice, strong water pressures in our shower at 1.3 gallons per minute. So easily we could be probably taking a shower and doing dishes you're probably not going to do that anyway because it screws with the hot water my point is three gallons per minute is is pretty good per usual we're going to be testing this in real life scenarios over the next few months so as we do that if things change we always will update the description down below and the blog post so if you're ever curious about something that you think you know hey did they ever put an update on this we do we put it in the blog post you can find the link to that blog post in the description below you can also just go to our website changinglanesrv.com and do a search before i forget i just want to talk a little bit about the tools i'm going to use and, and how this works unlike the electrical stuff you can consider this kind of a how-to video because it's really not that complicated all of your plumbing in your rv is going to be this type of um, rigid tube combined with some flexible version of this uh, and this is called pex this is half inch pex and i think that's a measurement of the inside diameter but it's really pretty simple to do you do need a couple of tools though uh, number one is a cutter that's going to cut your pex nice and cleanly like so gives you that nice straight flat edge so you're not dealing with any kind of weird something you might get from using i don't know wire cutters or something so a good cutter is a good idea and you're also going to need uh, obviously some pex tubing to take care of that stuff you know routing it where you want it to go and you're going to need some pex clamps and these are real simple all of your PEX fittings are going to be similar to this, where you've got the uh, part that goes into, this goes over, this goes in, and then you need a special crimping tool that gets both ends, Let's see if it focuses there, and then that just goes 
over these and then you clamp down and crimp it. You can, you can see me do this when I set up our little test and experiment here. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I wouldn't use worm drive clamps on something like this where you've got water because those things can slip, especially with the vibration. If you ever need to get these things off, they can be a bit trying, uh, a bit of a challenge to do that. But you'll notice, hopefully you can see that, you've got some little clamps there that are designed to kind of hold it as you clamp it down. You just kind of kind of pry this thing up to get these off. Uh, but if you do it right the first time, you don't have to take any off, so there's that. But in case you have to do it, you know, to remove some stuff, to add stuff, or whatever. I also have a whole bunch, I keep a bunch of these on hand, uh, these straight through and 90 degree adapters in case I ever need to do any uh, plumbing, if there's ever any leak or anything. A lot of people are not big fans of the flexible PEX, because it's not really PEX, it's just some other kind of, of tube that they use in there. And it's a little bit larger in diameter, and it can be difficult to get this around the outside of that hose initially. Uh, but work it on there, it will get on there, and it will crimp down really well. I never had a problem with any of those leaking. Enough with all this yap, yap, yap. Let's get to the install. But before I do, please click that subscribe button down there. Click the like button. Those things really help us out. It tells YouTube that we're not such horrible people. You might want to watch us again. Please do that. We appreciate it. Let's get to it. Let's go ahead and start this adventure over on the wet bay side, over here on the driver's side. And we can see we've already got the filter in here. And if you look here, this is my freshwater connection. This is used for both, you know, just live city water connection. And it's also used to fill the tank, depending on, you know, how this situation is configured here. So if I follow this and go up inside the belly of the beast here, that freshwater connection comes in right here and then goes straight out to that filter and then back in to this connection right here. So my plan is to just cut that filter out of the system entirely. I really don't need four filters. So that will eliminate that plumbing going out and back in. And then all I have to do is connect this to the inside of the filter and then take the outside of the filter and go to this. I pondered how I want to install this thing. You might remember in the 397, I put it kind of up on the ceiling here. I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I've given this some thought and we have so much room in our basement down here that I'm going to actually put it on this wall right here. Uh, and let me show you where. I got to get back out. So as you can see here, got a lot of room on this side. This is the other side over here. And get that open. And my plan is to put this right up here. It's a bit heavier when it's full of water, but you can see I got a nice big empty wall right here. I'm going to put it right up to the top so that way I can come right over the top of the wet bay here. Mount this thing right to the wall. Should be really pretty easy. Now, if you watched our last uh, filter install video, I did this whole bypass thing to where I could shut off the out and in valves and open up a crossover valve and bypass the whole thing. And I never really needed that. My, my intent there was to provide a way to bypass the filter system just in case I ever needed to. Uh, also to keep water on in the RV while I change the filters. But I mean, really how long does that take? Especially if I've got them right here, I don't think I'm gonna need that. My only concern there is backflow out of the system while I'm changing the filter. So I'll do a test when I'm done. And if I have to, I can put a, a valve on just the output side to stop backflow. So let's get up inside here and just start putting stuff in. Because this thing's full of water, I'm going to pull these filters off here so that I can mount the base of it up on there without having to hold it up. But while I do that, I kind of wanted to show you how these things attach and how the things screw on. In our old filter, 
the uh, one from Clear Source or any of these ones that have the big plastic ones, the entire bottom of the plastic uh, whole thing rotates and threads in. And uh, they usually have a special wrench for that kind of stuff. This has this little thing, which is pretty cool. Notice here that this has uh, these things up here. So let me just do this one in the middle. And you just use this to loosen it up. Instead of the entire filter screwing, just this, it's just this little collar here. Unscrews, pops off, and you can see the whole thing kind of comes off. So gonna get these off. I'm gonna keep these in order here. And let's get busy with this install. Okay, we're all plumbed up now. I've got the in connection right here coming in to a 90 and then up and over to here. That's the input side. And then the output comes up here. And I use the flexible tube that was already here. And that goes straight down. I never disconnected that. That goes right up here. That goes right here. So I think uh, I think I'm ready to hook up water. So not difficult at all. The whole process of plumbing using PEX and crimps is really pretty simple. I do want to mention another thing you're going to see if you click on our links and go to Mobile Must Have uh, to look at this filter system. You're going to see some things like this. Uh, Mobile Must Have sent us their new braided hoses. These are also from Blue Tech. Now I did a little testing on these and these are limited to about three gallons per minute which is what the filter is rated at anyway, so it's not a big deal. They are really nice hoses. Uh, they do look like they can kink. You can see that's obviously a kink, but with the braidedness, they just kind of pop right out. I would imagine if you got a really tight kink in it and pulled on it, it might damage this braid, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, one thing I really like that came with all of this stuff with these uh, filters, and I'm sorry, with this uh, 25 foot hose, are these quick connects, man. These stainless steel quick connects, those are beefy. I really like those. I wish they sold these separately, but they don't. Uh, I have been using these Gorilla fast adapters, quick connects for a long time, and they're really good and solid. Uh, they do sort of patina over time, and they still function well, if you unlock them, they still function well, but I don't know if maybe this stainless steel stuff will hold up better. As we travel over the next few months, I am gonna be taking this hose with me and using it as our main hose. They also sent from Blue Tech their pressure regulator. Now we've been using one of these. You can see they look like they were cast from the same mold. They're almost identical, uh, except this one is uh, a non-lead brass and this one is stainless. So I would be curious to see how well this one does. I might test this out as well, but my point that I wanna make here is you should have one of these for your input to your RV, regardless if you have a filter or anything or whatever. Some of these campgrounds and RV parks can have super high water pressure. And if you go shoving 100 PSI into your RV, you're going to have problems. We usually set ours to between 40 and 50 PSI. Um, most campgrounds we find we're usually getting about 40 or 50 anyway. And it's, you know, a nice adjustable one. Now, the ones that you might get that are fixed, don't get those. They're horrible. They limit your flow severely. 
I should also mention that we did try to do some water quality testing on this to see if we could notice a difference. It didn't really work out because the water quality of the input coming from our well and its filtered system was already pretty good, so there wasn't anything to show there. However, we will keep an eye on this as we travel and update the blog post accordingly. As usual, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that on your way out. We really appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.